So welcome to another session of SAP i5 video tutorials. So in this session we will be talking about what are views and what are controllers. So let's just see the agenda of this session. So first I will just introduce you to views, what are views in SAP i5. Then I will just show you how to use a particular view in SAP i5. Then correspondingly we will also see what are controllers and how to use controllers. Then we will just have a brief look at the MVC concept in SAP i5 and then followed by practical example where I will just describe about the views and controller itself. So moving on to the views, so what are views? Views are used to define the UI of the application in a SAP UI5 and there are mainly four types of views that we could create XML, JSON, JS and HTML. So in the XML view we just only define the UI and in the JS view we also define the UI followed by the logic behind the UI. So if we are defining a button, so the logic behind the press of the button can be also described in the JS view itself. But in XML view, we can't do this. We need a controller for that. So we have this HTML view also. So in the previous video where we have seen the hello world application example, there I have used index.html file where I have just coded hello world message in the HTML file itself. So moving on to how to use a view. So there are basically three steps. One is to create the web view, I, uh, view folder in the web content and then we have to create the view file in the view folder itself and then we have to instantiate the view in the index.html file. So if we are using routing, you could do the um, instantiating part in the manifest.json file itself. So here I have done this in the index.html file just for an example itself. So first I have created a variable named view, then this is the view is the control here which is um, followed by the namespace that is sap.ui and in the brackets we could see the properties. One is the id, another is the view name and the, then is the type. So in the id I have given a string that is id view1 and in the view name I have given this view name which is followed by the namespace. So we describe the namespace in the index.html file itself. So here the type is XML view. So, so this, this whole is a predefined function. So this is XML. If we are using a JS view, we just use it JS or something like this. So moving on, here we are seeing controllers in SAP UI5. So what exactly are controllers? So basically we write the coding or the logic for the particular control in the controller itself. So we write only in JavaScript but in the view we have these four formats in, in which we can create the views but in controllers we could only create in the JavaScript itself. So here we are just using the logic for this. So then we have this four lifecycle events here that is on init, on exit, on after rendering, on before rendering. So in the on init when the UI5 application initializes. So what should happen in the initialization? So that code we write in the on init function. And what happened then when the application exits? So that we write in the on exit function. And if a particular control is rendered, so what happens before rendering and what are after what happens after rendering that should be written in the on after and on before rendering methods. Now moving on to the next slide, that is how to use a controller. So to use the particular controller, what we have to do, we have to create the controller folder in the web app and then we have to create the controller file which we have to keep it in the controller folder itself. So two steps are over, so I have created this controller folder here and then I have created the xyz controller file that is .js file and I have kept this file in the controller folder itself within the web application. and then. Now how to define the particular controller? So we have already defined the XML view likewise. So this is the view. So in this view we, are, we have to give the path for the, its controller. So here the, there is this controller name which is followed by the, this is the controller name, XYZ is the controller name. So this is the namespace which you define in the, in the index.html file. So followed by this controller and dot XYZ which is the name of the controller itself. So this way we could use the particular controller for the particular view. So now moving on to the next slide. So here we will discuss MVC concepts here. So MVC stands for model view and controller. So basically views contain the UI and if we are using a button or something like that. So the on the press of the button what should be done? It should be defined in the controller. 
so basically views are the ui of the application and notifies the controller when the events are triggered and then there is the controller where we write the logic for the particular event that is going to happen and the model which is responsible for managing the application data in the database or backend itself so in the model we create the json model or maybe server sided model that is o data model that we create and we just fetch the data from them and give them to the controller now moving on to the next slide and here this there i in this example i have explained a simple practical example where i have used views and controllers so in the video you will see what the example of views and controller itself so i will be just creating a new sap wifi project followed by the new view folder and controller folders and in the view folder i will be placing all the views and in the controller folder i will be placing all the controllers and we are defining the controllers for their respective views and we will just execute the project afterwards now we will see the practical demonstration of all these steps so i will be creating a new sap wifi project in sap web id and thereby understanding the concept of views and controllers so let me just start my web id here it is and now i will create a new project here project from the template so i won't be needing manifest.json files i will be just selecting 1.28 sap version from the drop down and clicking on sap ui5 application then click on next i will choose my project name which would be demo demo project 1 and my namespace would be same demo project 1 fine and clicking on next my view name should be page 1 that's it clicking on next and then on finish so my new project would appear in the workspace here and it's here i could we could see so the first view that is page.view.xml let's just run it select index and click on play so this is appearing here so let me just show you how it's instantiated in the component.js file so here we have written the root view and the view name is here demo project dot view dot page one so here in the component dot js file it is instantiated but we if we have to instantiate this particular view in the index dot html file let me just show you how it's done so assume that we are not using the component dot js file for this and for that purpose we will just come in this portion here so now what i um the component dot js file won't load let's just see what will happen i will just save this and just refresh it again let's see what happens so here component uh, some error is showing or nothing is showing since we are not loading the component dot js file now to instantiate the view using the index dot html file what we will do we will just copy some code snippet from here i will just explain to you what it means i will i am just removing this portion here okay so this is where application where app this is the variable and this is the name uh, sap of a control that is sap.m.app and this is the property initial page and we are giving the id in id page 1 which is this one so we have instantiated this view and we are giving the id passing the id to the initial page to this application so this is the variable page 1 that i have used and this is the control of the view sap.ui.view and we have the property id and view name and the type so we have passed the id as id page 1 and the view name this is the namespace that we have created and view is the folder this one and the page 1 is this fi particular file so we have given the path to the particular view file and here we are giving the type sap ui core dot view type dot xml so we have created xml file that's why we have given it as xml if we have created js file we had to write here js so that's done page 1 and we are adding the page 1 to the app and we are placing the app at the content that is defined here so that's done i will just save this let's see what's written in the page 1 dot view dot xml file so here we are mentioning the controller name as 
demo project dot controller dot page one. So demo project one is the namespace. We have to add this, and then we have to add the folder which in which the page one controller dot js file is located. So this folder is controller here, and in this page one is located, and we have to write give the path of the page one. And in the title, let's just say we write as something. Views and controllers. Let me just save this. Fine. And now I will just show you the controller code. This is page one dot controller dot js. So everything seems fine. Now let's just run this application. I'll just refresh this. So now you can see the page has been shared and it has been loaded. So the title has been appeared, views and controllers. Now let me just show you the, as previously discussed, the lifecycle hooks, lifecycle events in the controllers. There are four types of events: on init event, on exit, on after rendering, and on before rendering. So let me just show you the on init function here. So for that, I will just write on init. Function, and here I will use alert function, and here I will write inside the init function, inside init. So this seems fine to me, and if I just run the application again, so the first thing. It would when it comes to the page one controller, the init function would run, and this alert function would we would be able to see the init function. So let me just save this file and refresh this page. So I should get this alert message, okay, inside init function. So the init function has run, and this particular alert has been populated in the alert message. Now let's do one thing more thing. Now let's just use some controls of SAP UI5 in the particular view. For that, I will just use input input control input, and I will just use the property of input like placeholder, and I will just write something hello world. This seems fine to me, and I will just close the tag. Of input, it's that simple. I will just save this. Okay, now let's just run the application here. Okay, the first init function has run, and now I am clicking on okay. The controller has the control has been loaded on the view. So let's just type in something, something random. So it's working fine. One more example I want to show. I will just write a button code and the logic behind the button I will write in the controller file. So for the button control, I have to write button here and some text here. This is the property of the button. Click me. Okay, now I have to write the press event. Okay, I got some error. I will just write the press event here. On click. So this is the name of the function that I have deciding here. I will just close this. Okay, fine. I will just save this page and write the code for on click in the controller file. I will just add a comma here and then write on click on click. I will just use this alert here again and inside on press button. 
on button press. So let me just save this. So when someone clicks on the button, the control will go to this particular function here and this alert will be shown. So let me just save this and run again. So first the initial init function alert is shown to me. I'm clicking on OK. Then both the controls are loaded and if I click on this click me button here I will show I will get a alert on bu button press. So this seems to be OK. So this was the concept of views and controller. So we are following here MVC concept. We have followed the MVC concept by we have uh, we haven't followed the M in this MVC concept, but we have followed the V and the C. In the next tutorial, we will look at the models. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.